So remember that a gas is highly compressible. What that means is that you can smush more gas molecules into a smaller amount of space, and that affects the density. So the density of a gas is highly variable, depending on the conditions that you find the gas in. The conditions that that density of the gas is going to be dependent on will be its molar mass, also the temperature and the pressure, because if you increase the pressure, you're smushing more of those atoms closer to each other, and the temperature, because if you increase the temperature, particles will tend to spread out. So the greater the temperature, the less dense the gas you would expect to find, and the higher the pressure, the more dense that you would expect to find of your gas. So we can calculate the density of any gas at any temperature and pressure as long as we have those three pieces of information. So if we wanted to know what the density of helium gas is at 23 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere, this is roughly simulating like some indoor situation. Um, we would need to know that it's helium gas, the temperature, and the pressure. Now you'll remember that density is equal to mass over volume. In this particular scenario, we don't have specific mass and volume information, but we can calculate density another way. We can calculate it by finding the molar mass over the molar volume. If you're familiar with molar mass, molar volume might seem intimidating, but don't be intimidated. Let's just look at the units so you can see where this is going. Molar mass has units of grams per mole. Molar volume then by extrapolation is going to be the same type of thing. It's going to be a unit of volume. So since it's a gas, let's say liters per mole. See what happens to these units, the moles cancel out and we're left with units of grams per liter, which is a unit of mass per volume, AKA density. So we can find the density of any gas without specific measurements just by knowing its molar mass and its molar volume. If we look at this particular example, the molar mass of helium, we just find from the periodic table. For the molar volume, we said we're going to have units of liters per mole. So that's a unit of volume per a unit of moles. Because it's a gas under normal conditions, we can relate that volume and that moles using the ideal gas equation. We can divide both sides by N and P, and we have our equation. We see that the volume per mole is equal to the ideal gas constant times the temperature divided by the pressure. You can find the molar volume of any gas rearranging the ideal gas law. We know that molar volume will have units of liters per mole, so as we plug everything in for this particular scenario, let's make sure that we get those units back. So we want the molar volume of helium at 23 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. So R is a constant, it's always the same. Temperature needs to be in Kelvin, so we need to add 273 to 23. We'll multiply by 296.15 Kelvin. Keep in mind that that six is the sig fig here and divide by the pressure. Then let's look at the units to make sure they cancel. So atmospheres cancels and Kelvin's cancel, which leaves us with liters per mole, which is what we wanted. We wanted a unit of volume per unit of moles. If you calculate that all out, we see that the molar volume at 23 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere is 24.302 liters per mole. That answer so far makes sense because we know at standard conditions, so 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere, that the molar volume is 22.4 liters per mole. So because our temperature has raised a little bit, we would expect the molar volume to be a little bit more than that. All right, so we can finally answer our question, what is the density by taking these two pieces of information, the molar mass and the molar volume, and dividing them. So the density is equal to the molar mass divided by the molar volume. The molar mass of helium is 4.00 grams per mole, and the molar volume at 23 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere is 24.302 liters per mole. Our moles cancel, and we see that the density of helium at 23 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere is 0 0.165 grams per liter. First we ask if that makes sense. So for some context, the density of air under similar conditions is roughly 1.4 grams per liter. We know helium will float in the air, meaning it's less dense than the air, so our answer makes sense. And the last question is the significant figures, so let's go back to where we started calculating our molar mass. We had three significant figures. The temperature, this one's place is where it's going to round here when we turn it to Kelvin. When it's here, that means that this has three, this has four, and the pressure has three as well, meaning our molar volume will need to be rounded to three. So because this has three and this has three. 
our answer can have three, which it already does. All right, so now it's your turn. I want you to see if you can answer the same question, but let's substitute sulfur hexafluoride in for helium. Pause the video and see if you can find the density of sulfur hexafluoride. The density of sulfur hexafluoride is going to be the molar mass of sulfur hexafluoride over the molar volume at 23 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. The molar mass of sulfur hexafluoride is 146.06 grams per mole. Did you realize before you calculated that the molar volume would be the same? That's because the molar volume is based on the kinetic molecular theory, which means that any gas, doesn't matter what gas it is, will behave the same under these ideal conditions. So. It doesn't matter if you have helium or sulfur hexafluoride or oxygen or any gas that you can think of. As long as the conditions are ideal, they will behave exactly the same. So if your temperature and your pressure are the same, then the molar volume will always be the same regardless of the gas. But you would calculate the molar volume using that rearranged ideal gas equation, and you just plug in the temperature and the pressure for whatever conditions you wanted to calculate it under. And in this case, if we plug those numbers in, the density of sulfur hexafluoride is 6.01 grams per liter. And this makes sense because sulfur hexafluoride is much denser than air and it sinks in air.